Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Todd Lindley of the National Weather Service office in Norman, Oklahoma. Let's see, put it out the door. And thanks for joining us for this morning's uh, updated webinar and uh, on heavy rainfall and flooding potential for this Tuesday, June the 17th. I'm here with our senior service hydrologist, Stephen Kruckenberg. And since this is a very uh, heavy rain and flooding event, we wanted to cover the latest information uh, that we have going into uh, later today. The main hazard headlines today and through Thursday will be the potential for widespread, very heavy rainfall, potentially three to eight inches. Uh, again, that will uh, the onset of that will be later today through tomorrow. The main headline here is definitely the potential for life-threatening flash floods and river floods. Now, along with that, there will be a low threat or low potential of brief tornadoes. However, by far, the headline making weather hazard uh, through today and tomorrow will be that of dangerous flooding, mainly over southern, central, and eastern Oklahoma, and that is a high threat of uh, very uh, significant life-threatening flash floods and river floods. And just by contrast, the potential for brief uh, tornadoes will be significantly lower, a very low threat, mainly over southern and eastern Oklahoma. And then once we get through this period later today and Thursday, we will have a much drier and warmer uh, weather this weekend. Radar update at 10 a.m. You can see very clearly uh, the, uh, the remnants of Tropical Storm Bill, now centered very close to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex south of the Red River, and that is moving northward. The anticipated track through the remainder of today and into tomorrow by 1 o'clock this afternoon, again, it will be very near Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, slowly moving north. By 1 a.m. Thursday, it will have crossed the Red River, and by 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon in east-central Oklahoma, then exiting the state finally uh, th late Thursday night and into early Friday morning. Now, this system will leave a very large footprint of excessive rainfall, really all the way from the middle Texas coast up through the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, uh, across eastern Oklahoma, and then turning northeastward into the Midwest. Here locally, we are expecting some very heavy rain, and we are seeing the onset of that now over south-central Oklahoma, just spreading north across the Red River. So through noon will be really the onset over south-central Oklahoma, and then as you go north, we'll have a later, uh, later onset of the very heavy rain. Some rain showers have been occurring already in central Oklahoma, but the truly uh, tropical-related activity will spread in uh, more like 6 o'clock this evening and persist through the evening and into the overnight hours. How much rain are we talking? Well, uh, there is going to be a very tight gradient somewhere along and just south and east of the I-44 corridor. That will include areas of central Oklahoma. Uh, I-35 over south central Oklahoma and points east of there, we are expecting and have, have high confidence for uh, high precipitation totals on the order of four to eight inches. This includes areas like Ardmore, Ada, and Durant. As you move north and west of there, confidence decreases with uh, the higher amounts, but generally along and south and east of the Interstate 44 corridor, we are looking for amounts generally two to four, maybe locally higher uh, amounts of rainfall in that corridor as well. But there will be a very tight gradient with areas west of the I-44 corridor receiving uh, significantly less rain, possibly one to two inches or less. The threat for severe weather, there will be a very low potential for tornadoes as the remnants of this system track across uh, the central and eastern parts of the state of Oklahoma. Uh, also a very low potential for uh, damaging wind gusts, possibly upwards of 60 to 70 miles an hour. We are expecting sustained winds around 20 to 30 miles an hour with this system as it moves uh, north across the area towards evening and the overnight hours and there will be a limited potential for some of those wind gusts to become uh, damaging. And then on your Thursday, the risk of severe weather will be over a much smaller area of southeastern Oklahoma, generally focused on the Durant area. Again, that will be a very low potential for tornadoes and also for damaging winds. I do want to stress that the tornado threat here will really be overshadowed by the significant flood and flash flood threat. Uh, tornadoes, if we do have them, will likely be brief embedded in heavy rain. These are not going to be the dramatic type of tornadoes that, that we do commonly see here. 
these will be brief and embedded in rain, uh, you know, and uh, would have a much less significant impact than the overall threat from the heavy rainfall. So the highest concern here is certainly the uh, flooding and flash flooding potential. If we look at the last 30 days rainfall across the state of Oklahoma, you can see these uh, individual swaths from southwest Oklahoma into central Oklahoma and then also across the Red River in south central Oklahoma and across southeast Oklahoma. These are areas that have received upwards of uh, 12 to 15 to even close to 20 inches or more of rainfall in the last 30 days. Uh, the individual squares and dots you see here, these are uh, river flood sites that are close to or actually in flood and these are the areas that we have the highest threat uh, where additional rainfall from Tropical Storm Bill just will cause uh, uh, exacerbate those flooding situations and have the highest risk of flash flood and river floods. So with that, that's all we have for this morning's update on the situation with Tropical Storm Bill as it moves uh, north through the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and approaches Oklahoma through the day today and into this evening, and we'll pause for a moment to see if we get any questions. Stand by. Okay, so the first question uh, from Justin uh, on the regional radar, it looks like Bill's trying to drift to the northwest. Is that something we are seeing? Uh, as is common with tropical systems, there is a little bit of wobble with Bill's motion. It will temporarily drift a little to the northwest, but we do expect as it gets north of the Red River that we will see that uh, more predictable uh, move to the northeast that should uh, keep it south and east of the I-44 corridor as far as the center goes. Next question, please discuss the track rainfall amounts as it relates to the Oklahoma City metro area for the AM drive. Yes, uh, confidence is a little lower in the Oklahoma City metro area because we are expecting such a tight gradient in the rainfall uh, on the west and north periphery of the system. But we are very concerned, you know, if, if there is a little bit of a westward wobble like we discussed and the heavier rainfall amounts do fall cl in closer proximity to the Oklahoma City metro area that the uh, the morning commute could be dangerous in the morning. Uh, we'll have to see how those radar trends and the trends with the motion of the system go during the evening hours tonight. Is a webinar planned for tomorrow? Uh, we will certainly be looking at that potential and you guys will get the mass notification of that if we are planning one. We do anticipate being uh, very busy tonight issuing lots of warnings uh, including those flash flood and river warnings but uh, it could become uh, could become necessary to do one again by by tomorrow. Any identification that the track may shift more over Oklahoma City again? Uh, unfortunately, Oklahoma City metro area is in that zone where the confidence is a little lower because we are expecting that northeastward uh, turn to the motion. If we do not see that, uh, there is some of our higher resolution models that are showing heavier amounts of precipitation right along the I-35 corridor basically along and just south of I-40, so this is something we're going to have to monitor very carefully. Rumors that the metro will get around 10 inches, uh, you know, you can always find a computer model that shows an outlying um, uh, extreme amount either on the dry side or the wet side, uh, so there, you know, uh, the possibility of that, that seems to be a very low probability event at this time. Again, we're more confident with that uh, two to four inch amount uh, for portions of the metro favoring the south and east sides. And uh, one, or one question about the motion of the storm and that it seems to be slowing down. Yes, it did pick up speed a little bit overnight between say uh, to the east of San Antonio up towards the Dallas-Fort Worth area and it is now slowing down a bit on its northward progression into the state. So again, that's why we're not really expecting the real tropical rains to begin here in the Oklahoma City metro area until Roughly uh, 6 p.m., give or take an hour or two. 
any indications of flooding on the Wichita River? Well, fortunately, it looks like the majority of the rainfall from this system, and I'm looking at our hydrologist, Steve Kruckenberg, uh, would fall well downstream of the Wichita River, but we could see on the periphery some, uh, some heavier rains that would affect the Wichita River and Wichita Falls, and that's something we'll keep a close eye on. But certainly the strongest signal for heavy rainfall now would be just to the east of the Wichita Falls area. Yes, and the question uh, from Wendy there on the Deep Fork River, uh, certainly possible that we could see some impacts there. Uh, that's a little out of the, uh, the zone of the highest confidence for heavy rainfall, but uh, as this system moves across, we're just going to have to see hour by hour how it evolves. Uh, we know, you know that we're definitely most worried about south central Oklahoma along the I-35 corridor there and points east of there. Uh, any of the areas on the periphery of that are, are certainly within the zone of uncertainty and something we're going to monitor very closely. All right, we'll pause for one moment and see if we get additional uh, questions. And one more from Betty again about the Washita River and Johnson County. Uh, that would definitely be in the area of, of highest concern uh, where we are expecting the highest rainfall amounts. So uh, we definitely uh, would, would be concerned about flooding along the, the Washita River in Johnson County. Uh, questions if we're going to do a midday sounding. Uh, I have not yet heard any discussion about that, but that's always possible. Uh, this system, as far as the moisture profile and everything, things are pretty predictable with it, so uh, uh, the models are doing a, a good job resolving this system. So I'm not, not sure we're going to do one, but uh, we always have that option to do so. And another question about our tornadoes, they thread along this timeline, and I would say yes. Uh, tornadoes are a threat, however, I think they will be largely overshadowed by the very heavy rain and flooding impacts that we're going to see from this storm. Okay, and a question about the timing uh, of the system. Again, the center of the, of the storm will move across the Red River. Uh, during the overnight hours tonight by about 1 a.m. or so. Uh, but we are expecting the, the outer rain from this system to start impacting the Oklahoma City metro area by about 6 p.m. this evening, plus or minus a few hours, and we're already seeing that heavy rain spreading north of the Red River. Okay, thanks, Betty, for that additional information about the Washita River. Okay, we'll pause for one more moment and see if we have additional questions. Okay, no additional questions are seen on this end. So with that, we'll conclude the, the discussion. And thank you guys for joining the webinar today. And we'll keep you posted.